Good morning. It's Monday, uh, the 8th of June. I am Ann Fenlison. I'm one of the pastors at Trinity Long Lake, or Trinity Lutheran Church in Long Lake, Minnesota. It's a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA. Happy that you're spending some time here with me this morning. I've been thinking a lot lately about this concept of time and uh, especially how the word time is used in our New Testament. So uh, it's something that I think is really important for us to understand. When we hear or see the word time in scripture, it's important for us to understand the meaning, what, what time actually means. Let me explain. So in the original language of the New Testament, which is Greek, the word time can have two different meanings depending on the Greek word that is used. Now those two words are chronos and kairos, uh, but while both are translated as time, when we get to our English translation, their meanings in Greek are totally different. So when you pick up your English translation of the Bible, <clears throat> unless it's a study Bible in which the editors have chosen to uh, draw your attention to that word, to highlight what it means uh, in the Bible, you would have no idea what time was referring to. You would imagine it was maybe chronological time uh, or this other kind of time as kairos. So there is something that is called the interlinear Bible. Uh, most seminary, seminary students and scholars of the Bible know what that is. Uh, but what that interlinear Bible is, is it takes the original languages of both the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, uh, original language of Hebrew, as well as the Greek New Testament, which is where we get our English translation from. So it takes those original languages and it puts it uh, translates each word. It's word for word. It, it is not an easy read in English. In fact, it's very awkward, if you can imagine. It will go through each word uh, separately. So it doesn't make it easy reading, but it's more uh, helpful to understand what the meanings of those words are in the original language. So an interlinear Bible will tell you what the meaning of the word time is in English. Now there are many Bible software programs out there that will uh, give you this at a glance. Most of them are not cheap, but there's a great source available online free. And you can find it at Scripture for All, and the four is just the number four. So one word, Scripture for All, and it will give you both the Hebrew Bible and the Greek New Testament in interlinear forms. So Chronos time means chronological time. It's like the hands, uh, the second hand of a clock ticking. Well, it's really the, the other hands too. We just don't see them moving unless we have a second hand. Or it could be uh, like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz where she has the hourglass and the sand is running through it. That's chronological. Also the clock in one of my favorite movies, Groundhog Day, where it flips over every morning uh, from 5.59 to 6 a.m. Those are chrono examples of chronological time. Now Kairos time is entirely different. And what Kairos means is a season or a special time. So I wanna read to you a passage from Mark. It's from the first chapter when Jesus calls his disciples. Uh, begin, it's uh, verse 14 and it talks about time. Here's that verse. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So the verses that follow this, and this is important, are the ones where Jesus calls his disciples, where they drop their nets and follow him. So that's Jesus. It's important to pay attention that Mark has put Jesus saying essentially Kairos time. This is the right time, the right season, which is followed immediately by disciples being called. So those two things are related. Kairos moments have been happening for ever since, right? And they happen in our lives as well. You and I have them. Think about your past. 
uh, especially when God brought you someplace where you uh, acted on something or where you followed or where you were transformed. Often we can see those Kairos, Kairos moments happening when we have the uh, opportunity to look back. For us, taking the path of following Jesus is not something that happens all at once. We'd like to think, of course, that once we have made our choice and gone down that path, that it's smooth sailing, that it's clear the whole way through, but that is just not the way it goes. For our walk in discipleship, uh, it's, a, it's a, a series of Kairos moments because honestly, the Holy Spirit is uh, in charge of our faith. And those Kairos moments are not just once and done. They are happening all the time. So I'd like you to think about where in your life your Kairos moments have happened and also to give thought as to whether we are in a Kairos moment right now as society. And I hope to talk a little bit more about this on Wednesday. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, be with all who are struggling today, those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, those who are working for justice, those who are learning how systemic racism has left so many of your children, your people, oppressed. Be with all who are volunteering here in our communities, serving those who are so very much in need. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us, not only in our chronological day-to-day -day lives, but in those Kairos moments, those times of opportunity when your Holy Spirit is getting our attention and calling us again to be the hands and feet of Christ to the world. Lord, open our eyes to those Kairos moments into which you are calling us and help us to follow. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, go and have uh, a day that is blessed. Look for God. Look for those Kairos moments. And I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.